This particular scenario I wanted to go through, it's a real-life scenario of some sort of sequence. It's talking about retirement investing, and it says that the chart below will talk about how much money we have at the beginning of each year. Then it asks, if this growth continues at the same rate, how much will I have at the beginning of the 12th year? Uh, so the very first thing that we need to determine is this one a, an arithmetic or geometric sequence. The way that we determine that is we try to find what the difference is between these two. The difference between 1800 and 2160 is 360. So if the difference is 360 between 2 and 3, and 360 between 3 and 4, then I know that this one's an arithmetic sequence because we're adding that same amount every single time. And we could be adding it, we could be subtracting, it doesn't really matter as long as the difference is the exact same. Uh, and if I do that, okay, so I do that, that's 360, and then the difference between 2 and 3 is actually 432. So we know it's not an arithmetic sequence. The next thing we do is try to find out if it's a geometric sequence. The way that we know that is if we're being multiplied by the same ratio every single time. The way that we determine that is I take number two, end of year number two, I have 2160, and I divide that by 1800, and I see what that is. In this case, it's 1.2. I say, okay, that's great. Now I try to look and I try to take three and divide it by number two. I try to see if this is the common ratio between these two. Now if I take 2592 and divide it by 2160, I find out that it's 1.2 as well. So now I find my common ratio. So because we have a ratio here, it's being multiplied by the same thing, 1.2 every time then that tells us that it's a geometric sequence. Well, that's really helpful because if it's a geometric sequence, I can use my generic formula for geometric sequences. Okay, and I start plugging in some information that I know. Well, I know that A of 1, that's my first year, I have 1,800. Okay, my first term in the sequence is 1,800. And I know my common ratio is 120% of the original amount, which is 1.2. And I found that, again, by just taking number 2 and dividing it by number 1. And that gave me 1.2. And I did the same thing on number 3 and divided by number 2. And that gave me the exact same amount. So that's what told me that's what my common ratio was. So now I'm going to fill in the information that we know. 1,800 is my first term. 1.2 is the common ratio. Well, now that I want to find the 12th year, all I need to do is plug in 12 for n. Right here for this n and way up top here in this exponent. I do that. And if you wanted to, you could just plug this part on the right-hand side into your calculator and it'll spit out the answer for you. If you want to keep going down, you can too. That'll be fine. Uh, I simplify this one. I've got to do what's in my exponent. Uh, 12 minus 1 would give me 11. 1 1.2 times 11. Now, we'll get, this one we get into our order of operations. We have to do exponents before we do multiplication. So I'll do this one first. 1 1.2 times 11 is 7.430084. 7 now, I let that one go long. I don't chop it off. Even though this one says round to the nearest whole number, I don't round it to the very, very end. Uh, so now that I do 1800 times 7. 430084. Now I can round it to the nearest whole number, which is 13,374. Now, these, these are dollars. You could put a label on it. You could put decimals and all that. Um, but I ask you to round this one to the nearest whole number. And whenever you're entering this, entering this one in online, don't put dollar signs in it. Just leave it like it is. It'll be fine.